to New York far before they hit other other countries, other areas. Like highways and ramps came in years ago, two years before they would hit the runway. And keeping this in mind, I'm going to be talking to you guys about Scott Schumann, also known as the Sartorialist, which is his fashion blog. And uh, before we get into it, I'm going to talk to you. I'm going to give you a little overview. First, we're going to be looking at the history, what he did to become who he was, like what made him who he was. We're going to talk about what the Sartorialist is and what it's evolving into, what it's becoming, and then the influence that the Sartorialist now wields over the fashion industry. Um, he was born in Indianapolis, Indiana. He actually said it was a area completely devoid of any good fashion. Surprise, y'all. Um, from there, he went to Indiana University, where he majored in merchant, uh, apparel merchandising and minored in costume design. So in an interview, when asked about his college, he said that he spent his time in between accounting classes and making tutus for the Ivy Musical School. Um, after he graduated, he moved to New York, where he got a job for designers such as Helmut Lang, uh, Rudolf Valentino, and finally landed a job with Philip Bokerman, which is a high-end mega store. Um, he was the director of men's fashion there, got experience, but this wasn't really enough for him, so he, in the late 1990s, bought a showroom, and in his showroom, he would take a fledgling uh, designer, take them, help them build their brand, uh, help them with their photography before he <coughs> owned his photography skill. But with the events of 9-11, he decided that he wanted to shut down his showroom and spend more time with his daughter. So as he was going around the city, he would still see fashion. He would still see people who he thought were fashionable. He couldn't escape it. So what he did was he started carrying around a camera and with the eye of a designer, started taking photographs of people. So he would like look at these women and say, look, her, the color combination here is really cool. I want to document that. And um, he started to amass enough photographs that he wanted an outlet for it. So he decided to start a blog. His blog is the Sartorialist. And Sartorialist is what it means, like feeling and feeling and like fashion. So um, the coolest thing about the blog was what he saw on the street and what he was seeing on the runway were completely different. So like the blog was his attempt to help you bridge the gap between what was happening on the runway and what was happening on the street. Um, when the blog started, it was merely like a category, like a catalog of fashion, like cool heels, cool scarves, nice, nice combo. But what it's become is it's become more of a documentary of social expression. Um, like this man, for example, like you wouldn't see him and normally think, wow, that's high fashion, like got like a rainbow scarf, rainbow glasses, like a bow tie with stars on it. He just kind of looks goofy. What um, Schumann is looking for though, he's transferred from fashion to what he calls intangible qualities. Um, they're poise, posture, confidence, like attitude. Like this guy has so much confidence. You can just see in the picture that he's confident. And uh, in the words of Kanye West, um, <laughs> he said, uh, Scott Schumann is a historian marking the feelings of a generation one photo at a time. So, so his blog has actually grown immensely in the four years that it's been up. He has three million readers a month. He was named one of uh, Time Magazine's top 100 design influences, the 90s most creative person in business by fast company. In 2008, he was a part of the Gap style icon campaign. Um, number one fashion photography trend for American Photo Magazine and monthly he has occasions in Q where they take his Scott Schumann shoot, put them in the magazine, and associated with GQ is menstyle.com, and they have this video blog that they discuss like recent fashion trends, and the next video I'm going to show you is a little clip where Schumann is what they call in the closet, in the fashion closet, discussing the trends of uh, last spring. Let's talk about what happened off the runway. You know what I was seeing? Uh, guys either going sockless, That's like true. this, yeah. or maybe like a little ped, you know, something that's inside there. But I actually saw a couple of guys doing it well with like a little visible sock, like right over the ankle. I saw one guy very, you know, this guy was like totally ballsy in Paris, and he was wearing like a women's twin set cardigan on his shoulders. And, you know, I don't know if it was uh, a confusion of masculinity, if it was just something that he was so comfortable with his masculinity, that he just felt like, you know, a little twin set would be nice to wear in Paris. <laughs> Dude, I'll fuck uh, you. That, that, that was me. Hey. <laughs> 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 uh, um, so moving on, I just want to talk to you guys about the influence that he now wields over the industry. Something, one of the coolest aspects of the 
our story with is that it led to the rise of the real person. Um, the way that fashion was moving was this really super glossy, stylized, like airbrushed aesthetic. Everything was like edited to to uh, an end that wasn't really attainable by the average person. So what he's done by taking pictures of people on the street is put the emphasis back on the real person, back on what's happening, what people want. And this has actually moved into the area of advertising. Truman inspired like a whole movement of fashion blogs. And blogs like Last Night's Party, which is a party of photography, actually were featured in Converse ads recently. Um, and finally, the coolest, like another one of the really interesting things is that Truman's photography is being used by major fashion houses such as Ralph Lauren, J. Crew, Banana Republic. Uh, this is a picture from the event, and he he's in both circular those pictures. And the the design of fashion is being influenced by what the pictures he's taking. And in an interview uh, with Banana Republic, he actually said, "I started." He was at a meeting, and he said, "I started to describe this picture I'd taken." And the guy said, "Oh yeah, we know that picture. We already designed a whole look." So 